Hello, hockey fans. The Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. We're on the air for the next half hour. I'm Kenny Callagher along with Jerry Burrow. Jerry, today is October 5th of 2020. We're a month late. Boy, we should have been year, here a month ago. What a year this has been. I think our last taped show was eh, February or March. Maybe March. Right after the state high school tournament, they closed everything down. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's been a long time. And Six, seven months. We could have talked a lot of hockey, but there wasn't any. <laughs> yeah, NHL shut down. They got the Stanley Cup in, and we have a Stanley Cup champion, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, defeated the Dallas Stars, thank God. And UMD could not re repeat. And so are they still defending champions? I guess they have to, because yeah. who was the last one? So I guess they are. Yeah. Well, uh, again, glad you could join us. Uh, we're back for uh, a new season. Not sure how this is going to go, but uh, I know that the NHL is looking at uh, a shortened schedule. The League and Player Association have tentatively agreed to a December 1st start date with training camps starting on Tuesday, November 17th. However, a high-ranking team executive said an 82-game schedule for next season is a pipe dream. It's just not gonna happen. Uh, the ECHL has approved a start date for December 4th for a wow. full 72 game schedule. The AHL has already planned for a condensed schedule with a start date moved from October 9th to December 4th. Unlike other major sports, the NHL are more reliant on arena revenue than the massive rights deals by other sports leagues. And the situation is even more vital in the AHL where the economics just don't make sense without fans. Nothing's a done deal yet, Jerry. No. There's, there's still a pandemic. I talked to a couple of pro scouts and they're thinking the same way as that executive for the National Hockey League. They want to get started on around December 1st, but they say for money, they want fans in them in the stadiums they have to and they say they they, on that revenue. They, they're thinking they were talking after the first of the year so well, who knows there's a couple of things right now is they're talking during the uh, playoffs there were the bubble cities if you will you had toronto and edmonton and then edmonton hosted the stanley cup and that worked not a single player tested positive bubbles work it worked because these players were isolated. The, the teams were isolated. They didn't uh, venture out and, uh, and do things that might have caused them to catch COVID and spread it amongst the team. It worked. However, during the NHL season, they're, now they're discussing a possibility of a four-city bubble. Boy, I don't know how you squeeze how many teams are in Seattle. Seattle, Seattle's not a part of the mix this year. No, next year. Next, next year. Next year. So, uh, how do you fit these thirty-plus teams into four different cities? It better be a city that has a lot of hotels they can put put them in their bubble hotel rooms. And don't we still have some travel restrictions regarding uh, Canada in the U.S.? How do these teams move well, back and forth? They allowed the American teams to go up there. Well, they stayed there. Yeah, but I once they got there. Yeah, you know. But as far as you know, constant travel week after week, day after day, I don't know how that would work. But right, they can. And these players, even though even the Tampa Bay players, they were so glad to get home and see their families too, even though they won. You know. <laughs> you know, this really is something that here we are battling a pandemic, this COVID nineteen that is highly cont contagious. And people that are vulnerable are very susceptible and could face almost certain death if they fall within the certain categories, 70 or older, overweight, right. uh, underlying conditions, uh, bad core morbidity issues. Um, so we're dealing with something that's completely changed our, our world really, but not just our lives, but now us, uh, our, our, our sports teams. Yeah. I sports just, leagues. I just talked to Bob, Bob Nygaard, the former SID for UMD for 37 years. And we're talking about the fans and that at Bulldog hockey games. And 
we just started thinking, you know, two thirds of the fans that have season tickets are over 50 years old. There are older people that have these season tickets and they've had them for years and years. And he says that the season tickets, uh, th almost 30 years ago, they, they had a waiting list of over 2,000. Now they could sell the extra 2,000 if they had the people. You know, that brings up another good point too with the NHL especially and you know all these other leagues aside is that you've got your season ticket holders. Well, if they want to open with, a, I think they initially said a 20% capacity and then they were going to bump it up to 50 and get up to 90%. I don't know how that would work. And is everybody that's in the stands required to wear a mask? And what will happen with the fan next to the fan that's disobeying any of the orders or, or uh, things that you know they've set in place? This is just a bad situation for arena sports teams. Yeah, we were talking about that just in high school because the Minnesota State High School League just passed a thing where they're going to have 18 game season, drop 30% of the games. No fans. Well, they don't know that yet because it might be arena to arena, your city, your arena. They don't know that. It's not, you know, the word's not down yet on that. Well, what has MSHSL said? Well, they're going to allow the arenas probably to handle their own thing. Well, there's also Let's state say up here we don't have the COVID that bad. They might open it up to fans where down in the cities it's going bad. I see. Then there might be something like that. We don't know yet. Yeah. We don't know. No one knows anything yeah. still. Yeah. So I'm just looking at all these level of hockey. The Minnesota State High School League approved that they can start practicing the regular date they were going to, November 13th, I think it was, and start games right after Thanksgiving. Okay, juniors, the North American Hockey League is starting scrimmages already. They're going to start playing right away, but they're not going to allow so many fans. So it's not going to produce well, well, money. They're not going to allow any or no, some? No, some. They'll allow 20% or something like that. Okay. okay. Well, Cloquet is home of the wilderness. Yes. Minnesota. What are you hearing? What's Cloquet going to allow? I, uh, I think about 250. Yeah. 250. That's what I'm hearing. And then um, the North American Hockey League, I think, lost four teams going into this now. Okay, USHL is not going to, their plan is to start in November. And two of the teams are dropping out for one year because of this. They're going to put money into their arenas and get a better order than that. The Madison, the Suitors rink. <laughs> yeah. And um, I forget the other one, but two of the rink are staying out one year. Yeah. So the 14 teams only. But these are all money making. I mean, the juniors are just money. They're there for the money. It's a business. And I don't know how many teams can survive by not having money come in. And well, you can't. So, I don't know if it's even good to uh, even have hockey just <laughs> for well, the year or something. Sometimes. The scary thing is, is, if they start this, if they do this, and whether they allow fans or not, if you start having players getting COVID-19, you basically got to shut the team down. I mean, That's I don't another know, thing. You, 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 yeah. you have to. Soon, oh, and yeah. if you shut a team down, how does the league continue to play? There's two weeks that they can't play. There you go. This is not good for for, for And hockey. it's going to happen. It's going to happen, especially up here in the north Northland where you're inside a lot. Anyhow, in I the winter time. That if the NHL wants to have a season, they need to follow their their same protocol that they had during the playoffs, and they need to bubble up, Jerry. How about build an outside rink down in St. Paul? bubble up for the hotels and they play outside games. <laughs> Why, what's wrong with the XL? Hey, it's inside. Oh, I'm saying outside. You play outside all the time, like yeah. a rink rat. <laughs> well, again, the NHL can, can, I think, do this more so than uh, the, these other teams, the minor leagues, you know, because, well, we heard, you know, the AHL, especially the AHL, um, the economics don't make sense 
because they depend on that arena revenue more than other leagues, other sports. And they got these contracts and what's going to happen? How can they keep it refrigerated? That's cost a lot of money. And if the AHL is affected, that affects the the NHL. All all the way down the line. Uh, How do you move players up and down, back and forth when you've got how many teams are in Canada? Um, You know, and you've got this border situation. I, I don't think this is a done deal. Again, tentatively, December 1st, the NHL starts their season, but let's and that, go. And that's the same time as the colleges, but now I'm hearing they, they might wait until after the first of the year, too. Something's got to give here. Someone has to make a decision and go for it, and then when it doesn't work, close it down. And do you just say, well, let's just go, and when somebody gets sick, we'll shut it down. But then you're putting people's lives at risk. Yeah, who knows? You know, there's more than just the player getting sick. I don't want to make that that decision. No, I I agree, because you've got a sick player. Now he's maybe affecting other players. He's got his family to worry about. You don't even know it. It's crazy. Okay, uh, let's say, okay, we're playing now. All these leagues and that. Let's talk a little bit what happened with the Wild since (laughs) last March. There's a lot of things that happened with the Wild. Well, first off, they won the opening game in the playoffs oh. against Vancouver. <laughs> and I thought, here we go, boys. And then there was nothing after that. Nothing. Nothing. They had nothing in the bag. Nothing. And look what uh, the new general manager, Garen's doing. He's not going to re-sign Koivu. He's done it as a Minnesota Wild. I don't know if he'll play for another team another year or two. but Well, under the current circumstances, hard to believe he'd come back. Right. But uh, they trade Eric Stahl. He had 40 goals the year before last. And he was starting getting a few goals at the end of the season there. So they trade him for a younger kid, well, faster s- kid, but, yeah. he, but he hasn't shown anything goal, goal scoring. Well, they're, look, they're, they're going young. They're... Then they uh, picked up Nick Bukestead, a Minnes- at least he's a Minnesota kid. Yeah. Big boy. Oh, he's gonna ha- he's gonna have to make the team. Does right. Nick help this team? He's a centerman, right? Yep, he's a center, so he has a good chance of making it. Yeah. No, he's a he just hasn't proven himself yet. Well, he's got some NHL games under his belt. Oh yeah, Florida and Pittsburgh. Yeah. He's Florida about three, four years, and then he went up to Pittsburgh. And then he got the Russian coming in. Yeah. KK. He'll be a top six uh, forward. People, I think, are putting too much. Like he's going to be the the breaker for the team. I don't think so. Mm. He's not that he's not a, that big, and but I think he'll help the team because I think he'll be a top six forward. We'll see. You know, it's funny because I was watching the NHL Network, uh, uh, and I can't remember the player's name, but uh, former player, and they were talking and they were analyzing the uh, teams, and they got to Minnesota. And he said, Minnesota's one of those tweener. You know, they're in between. And he said, they've been there for 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. They haven't changed a bit. And what does Minnesota need to do? We've changed uh, coaches. Many times. <laughs> We've changed general managers now. Uh, I think this league, it's just the way you draft, the players you get. And let's face it, if you're going to win a Stanley Cup, you need four solid lines. Your number four line has to be as good as your number one line, maybe. I don't know. We don't have that. I mean, defense now, Suter's getting up there. But they still got Spurgeon. They just signed, uh, re-signed uh, Brodeen, Jonas. What about Zach? They're, they're getting old. They're not, I don't think they have anything left in them, really. I mean, Zach's got grit. And yeah, he's, but, he's, uh, but he's, he's gone downhill in scoring and all that. He's getting old. <laughs> now, when did they uh, sign that deal? I believe, was that a, a nine or an 11 year deal? 13. 13 years. 13 years. With him and. Uh, with the no Suter. trade, no trade clause, no. Yeah, that's crazy. No. At first, I guess everyone loved it, but they weren't thinking that, thir- wait a minute, thir- no one lasts 13 years really in hockey. Yeah. I mean, there's very few if they do. I mean, <laughs> but they're role players the last five Goal years. Goaltending, does Stalock come oh. back? Is Dubnik uh, the answer? I don't know. They might bring the young kid in. Who knows? Who's the young kid? The one that started with K. 
I can't oh. think of his name now. Okay. He played a few games this year. Um, you know, it really was... Dis- they're going to resign. They're trying to resign. I thought they were going to this week, but Carson Susie. Yeah. He, he play, I thought he, he looked pretty good for a young kid. I mean, he'll, he'll get better and better, too. So I think that'll be a good... He'll be a solid D for many years. Yeah. Dumba, I think they're going to trade. They're trying to trade him. Okay. But no one's going to give him much right now, so that's what the problem is. Yeah. Um, Spurgeon is still good. And I guess if they give Brodeen seven years. He's been here about seven years. Yeah, that long? It's pretty close. Came in pretty young, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 what this former player said about Minnesota being a tweener yeah. team, you know, just in between good and bad, and the fact that they've been there for the past 10 years, I thought, boy, that's a pretty good analysis. Well, you know, they traded a player today to San, San Jose, okay. to the Sharks, Ryan Donato. Okay. And they, they're getting a third round next year, yeah. third round pick. All right. So who is going to score? The only one I see on the list right now that shown anything is uh, Kevin uh, Fiala. Yeah. I can, I don't see anyone that. Well, maybe Coonan can pick it up. No. no. I don't know. I don't. I don't know either. And Jordan Greenway, you know, this is these guys, this team. Um, I think they've got a ways to go. But uh, again, back to the playoffs and the Stanley Cup and all that and the bubble teams in Edmonton and Toronto and then finishing up in Edmonton. I really thought the NHL, I really thought the league would take an opportunity here with nobody in the stands to get a little bit more creative with the camera angles, to get a little bit more creative with the way the game is presented on TV. And even without any fans, I thought that their piped in crowd noise was too loud. In, too loud over the announcers. Now, my understanding is, is that the NHL piped this into the arenas. However, Major League Baseball only piped it into the broadcast. Okay? Oh. So you weren't hearing the sound effects, if you will, in the baseball parks, but you were hearing them inside the arena. And why did they need a PA announcer? Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I, I just I thought that the NHL blew an opportunity with no fans in the stands. You know, they just stuck with that same old missionary style back and forth, and they didn't really get creative or try anything. Yeah, the announcing. No innovation. I wasn't. None. I just, I could have turned off the sound and watched the game. I, I thought. Even Doc didn't seem like he had his energy. And well, into, there wasn't no energy. You didn't have the fans there. You didn't have the things that, the tangibles that are, you know, make the game somewhat what it is. Um, I thought covering up the seats, you know, helped the visual thing there, but uh, I don't know. It just, uh, yeah, it hey, it's just the first time we saw fireworks. At, inside our arena? Inside an arena. At a hockey game. During, uh, after the Stanley Cup was presented. Oh. Ah, yeah. There you go. Gary Bettman, you know, presented the... Yeah. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning with a cup. He said they want to do things a little differently. They didn't so they... put the booze in when he came out. You know what? <laughs> I'm glad you said that because I thought, is this going to be the first time that Gary Bettman does not get booed uh, awarding the uh, Stanley Cup? But did I possibly hear some rhubarbs in the, uh, in the, in the uh, effects that they put in there? I wasn't sure. Yeah. Uh, we'd have to ask somebody inside, uh, but... Uh, they pulled it off, Jer. They did yeah. it successfully. They got it done. But how do they get an 82-game season done with all the teams? They can't. They can't. And why would they if they're not making money, if you can't fill the stands? Why wouldn't you shorten the season if you're going to have a season? Well, again, uh, Gary Bettman has said that they're looking at the schedule, making some adjustments. We believe we can ha- play a full season. However, a high-ranking team exec said an 82-game schedule for next season is a pipe dream. Jeez. And I agree with him. I, I, again, if one player, if a staff member, 
and God forbid a, a, a fan uh, gets this awful COVID-19 that is just... Well, they're having the draft. It would be devastating. This week. Yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, and the Wild get the ninth pick, but having it online, like, you know, and that's going to be weird, too. Right. Everything's weird. All you got to do is submit a name. We're picking yeah. this guy here. Read this guy. Oh, really? Name. They get 25 guys in every, all suited up, you know, and they're in the arena. <laughs> and all the uh, Midwest ones, well, I've been working all year, and you didn't take any of my guys, I told you. <laughs> I know the Wild have a new uh, GM, vice, uh, yeah. whatever, and assistant. They got him from Vancouver. That, that guy. So they're going to have two assistant GMs? Is in Curvers? Well, I know he's the, he's one of Curvers? the guys that's going to head up this. Oh, thing. he'll do the contracts. He's, he's got yeah. a lawyer degree, I think. That's so, why. Yeah, they have to. You know, it's not, there's no excitement to this. Mm-hmm. There's any of us. I've been out of, I see 400 games a year. I live in hockey rinks. Yeah. I've been so bored. Well, Nygaard, Bob Nygaard told me, he talked to, Scott Sandlin, first week after they closed everything down, first thing uh, Sandlin said is he was so bored. <laughs> that was the first week. <laughs> yeah. What uh, happened there with Nygaard? That didn't end well. Yeah. I don't know. It just, I think they, the way it sounded that from talking to other people that UMD did it the wrong way, but who knows. Everything's about money, I think, now, nowadays, where a person doesn't mean that much. Okay, so the Minnesota State High School League on hockey, they're going to have a season. Do we know when it starts? Yes. Uh, practice starts on the 13th, and then two weeks later, and... The 13th of this month? November. And then what they're going to do is that they want the games on a three-day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, two games a week. Yeah. And they got a couple extra weeks in case they're of weather or someone gets COVID. What about jamming everyone in a bus and traveling? That's, yeah, that's they want it in your region and your section. Mm, man. So it the only sounds... thing is East. See, Hermantown can't won't be able to go down and play with Z of the the big double A schools because yeah. they're not in there. So they're going to be playing more of the A schools and Rapids yeah. and Cloquet twice. So. Huh. But now all these ADs, they're going nuts because they have to schedule, reschedule everything and redo everything. They actually got to work now. Yeah. I didn't say they didn't work, but... <laughs> this is just awful. Yeah, it's crazy. And how does it, where does it end? When does it end? Does it end uh, next year or the following year? I don't know. Yeah. Man, they get the vaccine. Maybe that'll help. Well... Again, this is our first show that we've taped uh, since. Well, let's get back after the draft March. in a couple of weeks. We'll know more in most leagues, I think, by then. They have to make decisions because people have to plan. Yeah. And I think a couple of weeks we'll have another show. Until the, all these uh, leagues get going, uh, then we probably will start doing it every week or something yeah. and we'll have a show. But, but we'll keep you up to date on all that's happening. I got to get my hockey mask. Right now I got. There you uh, go. Smokey the Bear. There you go. Yeah. Hey, you're, you should be out in California with that. Only you can prevent NHL shutdowns. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, Jer, uh, again, uh, NHL scheduled to start December 1st. Training camps scheduled to start November 17th. Oh, going back, well, yep. going back to high school, there's a lot of people talking because of only 18 games. See, they're evaluating Pee Wees and Bantams now. They're going ahead with the full season. Well, they're talking and going to Minnesota hockey and USA hockey. A lot of these kids drop in high school this year and go to tier one, triple A, everything. And that way they can play 40, 50 games oh, if they want. Really? And the state high school league can't even jump in on that oh, at yeah. all. Oh, wow. Yeah. Would that be a permanent thing then? No, well, it could be if it went over good. <laughs> mm. Interesting. But here's another thing with the State High School League. As of now, the ruling they made to have the 18 games, there's no section or state tournament. So well, that's well, another thing. Well, that why can make, do this? Uh, coaches want games. They want to keep high school hockey. 
But the coaches wanted the sections and state. They think they can still do it. They don't have to have the state at Why the Why have zone. a regular season and not have any playoffs I know. and tournament? I know. State High School League likes to mess with you all the time. The coaches put a pretty good plan out there, I thought. Safety huh. and everything, you know. Yeah. And their their thing was the, oh, they can shorten some games, but they wanted playoffs and no state tournament. Okay. But you know, this is sad. This is terrible. And, and with all these teams, like the USHL dropping two teams this year, and American Hockey League dropping teams, are just they're closed down for good. But um, what's going to happen is that these kids, high school kids, think they can go up to these. There's not enough players. They're they're gonna. It's hard to make a team, and if sure. they do make the team, they won't dress all the time. Yeah. So they have to have something going here. What's happened in, in Europe with these uh, European leagues? I don't know what they're doing yet. Okay. I've just been studying, Russia, the talking to people about our leagues yeah. here in Minnesota yeah. and all the development to uh, get to the next levels and that. Because those leagues are affected in some way because they get a lot of North American players that play in those leagues. Yeah. And look at uh, the, the UMD. They, we got four or five players that are going to the pros, but now with all this going on, they left early. Richards, uh, Dylan Sandberg. Now they left early to go play in the pros. and They, they got nowhere to go. They might, they might not. Can the NCAA rule that... Uh, they could do a rule they can come back or something. I mean, Perinovich, this is a very unique Perinovich situation. Perinovich is another one. There's three right there. Extremely unique situation. Yeah. I think the NCAA better open up too. Yeah. Well, see that NCAA and then uh, Minnesota State High School. They, that's a junior. And they they trying to sometimes their rulings. I don't doesn't make sense to me. Well, it was fun to talk hockey with you, Jerry. It's been uh, it's been a while to say the least. Uh, we want to thank the staff at Packed TV, where this program is produced in downtown Duluth. And we want to ask you to join us uh, at our website. We have uh, minnesotahockeyconnection.com. We have our Facebook page. Find us on Facebook, Minnesota Hockey Connection, and like us there. And like Jerry said, uh, we'll be back a couple of weeks and uh, check in with you then and let you know where we're at. Yeah. Well, stay tuned. I hope there's hockey. Well, uh, I know we usually say, uh, what do I usually say? See you at the rink. <laughs> well, that's what you say. Uh, I don't remember what I used to say. See, it's been so long. <laughs> I've seen your moment. <laughs> we'll see you next week to drop the puck. All right. <laughs>